What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. This tutorial video was created to help you with the LEGO Technic 42124 off-road buggy set. This video is the first one in a new series of detailed powered up tutorials. They will be available in a new format on Patreon. I will post a separate video about this soon. The official Control Plus profile available for the set is not very user friendly. It has a small joystick to control the car and I find it very difficult to use. I will show you step by step how to create a custom control profile in the Powered Up app with sliders that is much easier to use. Let's get started. Let's start the Powered Up app. Make sure you have the latest update installed. This video was made with the 3.6.0 version. In the app, let's switch to the Create tab and tap on the plus icon to start a new project. You can give it a name or leave the default one. I suggest to use something custom for easier identification. On the next screen, choose the controller project type and then choose the customizable controller. In this view, you can add the widgets we would like to see on the screen. Tap on the plus sign and then scroll down to the controls or use the navigation tabs on the side. Select a vertical and a horizontal slider. I prefer to have a separate controls for throttle and steering. Tap on the add widgets button at the bottom. In this version of the app, scaling is still not enabled, so you will have less space available on smaller screens. Move the widgets to their desired positions. We need to change some settings for the widgets, so let's tap on the vertical one first. Here I could name the widget, but we won't need that at the moment, and I could also change the color, but I will stick to the selected one. The address could be also changed, that's the reference number we will use in the code to link the widget and the port of the hub. The settings we would like to change are under advanced settings. We will need to turn on return to zero, as without that the slider would maintain the same position once it is released. It is useful for trains for example, but not here. We need to change the same parameter for the horizontal slider as well. Luckily there's no need to switch back to the previous screen for that. You only need to use the arrows at the bottom to switch between the widgets. Once finished we can go back with the X in the top right corner. Let's add the third widget to display your speed. Tap on the plus again and scroll down to the display widgets. Add one of the gauges. We only have one type at the moment, so you can only select the color. We have all of the required widgets in place. Now let's switch to the code view. First tap on the lock icon in the top right corner, then tap on the editor icon. This is the coding canvas with the available code blocks on the bottom. If our hub is not connected yet, then this is the time to connect it to make sure we can test the functions going forward. Press the green button of the hub and then tap on the Bluetooth icon in the top left corner. You should see this animation turn green and there's a green check mark afterwards on the Bluetooth icon. If you tap it again, you see the Technic Hub listed there. You can go back by tapping on the X in the top right corner. Tap on the green tab for the motors and scroll to the end for the two blocks we need. These blocks with the double rounded sides can run without adding a start block. This one is for steering, the other one is motor power control. Let's start with the steering one. This block not only controls the rotation of a motor, but it also runs a calibration sequence every time it is started to ensure the center position is correctly set. It has two parameters. The first one is the port of the assigned motor, the second one is the input. We could simply set the port to B as the steering motor is attached to that port of the hub, but let's use the device address and port selector block to be more precise. As you see, this one has a number besides the letter for the port. If you have multiple devices connected to the app, then they are identified with a number. With the proper number and the letter selected, here you can address up to four connected devices. We only have one hub connected currently, so the number will be 1 and the steering motor is attached to port B. Now we need to define the input parameter. Since we want to use the horizontal widget for steering, we need to select one of the teal code blocks. This is the one for the sliders. You need to set the ID of the widget as a parameter. If you don't remember the ID, then you can go back to the controls interface, unlock the editor mode and you will see that the horizontal sliders ID is 1. Now let's go back and set that for the widget. So we are done with the steering. Let's set up the throttle control. 
That motor is attached to port A, so we add the similar device and port selector block like previously. The input block will be again the teal slider one, the ID for the vertical slider was zero. Now let's test if these two work properly. Tap on the game controller icon in the top right corner, that will show us the controls and start the project. As you can see the initial servo calibration happens when it is launched. Steering seems to be set up correctly, but apparently throttle control is reversed. We need to reverse it somehow. Although it would be somewhat logical, but you cannot simply turn around the slider for this. We need to change the code to turn the values around. The numerical output of the slider is a number between 100 and minus 100. To reverse it, we need to multiply the value of the slider output block by minus 1. This will turn 100 to minus 100 and minus 100 to 100. As you can see now the steering and throttle control both work properly. The last thing to set up is the code for the gauge. I would like to have our speed displayed. Let's go to the teal code blocks again. This is the one for the gauge. The ID of the widget was 2, so let's set the first parameter to 2. This block is not rounded, so we need a start block for the beginning. But this way the code would only run once, and we would like it to be active continuously to be able to display the speed of the motor, so I need to add a loop to it as well. This way whatever is in the loop will be executed again and again. So the second parameter of the gauge is the value, I would like to display the actual speed of the motor. For this I will need this green block that gets the speed value from the specified motor. I need to define the port of the motor, for this I can use the same block I used for the throttle. By clicking on the three dots I can select the copy icon, then tap on the other block and it will be duplicated. Now I can drag the new one to the appropriate position. So there's one thing left, since an inverse value was used for the motor I will need to do the same for the display as well. And we are done. So let's test our control interface. Steering and throttle control works much better than the official control plus joystick. Additionally we have a speed display, which is the actual rotation speed of the motor and not the power applied, which means if the car is blocked then the display value will be zero. That was all I wanted to show you today, stay tuned for the next powered up tutorial. You can find the link to the tutorial page in the description, make sure to check it. See you next time, bye bye.